Hello, today I want to show you an autopilot I made entirely in KOS that is capable of launching realism overhaul rockets to pretty much any given target orbit. It can do that because I implemented a genuine rocket guidance algorithm called Powered Explicit Guidance. Uh, and I'm going to show it to you in action, so uh, let's load this little demo rocket, which has two stages. First is a solid rocket booster, and second runs on a hypergolic liquid fuel. Mm, and the second stage will be guided with PEG. So let's hit the launch button and I'll explain everything, uh, everything else as we go along. The script is configured so that it starts uh, as soon as the rocket is loaded onto the pad, so we can see the KOS terminal and the countdown. There's the ignition and there's liftoff. As you see, I'm trying to be reasonably realistic with the launch sequence, so the main engine has ignited a few seconds before the liftoff, before release of the launch clamps, and I know it's not actually done for solid rocket boosters, I don't even know if realism overhaul engines need that at all, but I implemented this feature just in case, just in case we needed it, it's not too difficult, so we have it for this bit of realism. And now the rocket has started pitching over for the gravity turn maneuver, which is not actually uh, a pure uncontrolled gravity turn, just like you would read in the tutorials, I would say to go straight up 100 meters per second or so, depending on your rocket's thrust to weight, weight and then pitch over 5 degrees, say. This method is good for manual flight, but if we can guide the rocket, it's not very precise. Uh, the actual trajectory differs wildly, depending on those initial conditions, that velocity and angle, so we're still doing some guidance. Uh, and we're doing what's called passive guidance. That means the autopilot does not recalculate the trajectory mid-flight. It simply follows a pre-calculated program that says, uh, that binds pitch angle with mission elapsed time. And it pretty much says that T plus that many seconds aim that many degrees above the horizon. I have designed this program in MATLAB before the flight uh, so that it didn't cause uh, excessive angle of attack on the vehicle because as you may or may not see the rocket is aerodynamically unstable believe me I tried flying it manually and I tried and I failed miserably uh, my rocket would break apart because of the aerodynamic forces I was unable to hold it straight in the direction of motion but KOS uh, since version 0.18 is has become really good at it and as long as I don't force it to uh, fight against angles of attack, excessive angles of attack, it can maintain the rocket on track. We're nearing the fairings jettison point and if we wanted to we could drop some strap-on boosters or something like that. There we go. And soon the stage is going to cut off and we're going to have a staging sequence. There is the cut off and staging. Separation motors are pulling the spent first stage away from the rocket and the second stage is igniting a Eulage thrusters. This is actually a reaction control system pushing to settle down fuel in the main tank. Realism overhaul people are uh, very familiar with the procedure. And now we have main engine ignition and the stage is running powered explicit guidance right now and soon it's going to tell us that the guidance has converged which will mean the autopilot has found a trajectory that injects us into a circular 200 kilometer high orbit around Earth. And now a little bit about why we need that, why we need the complex autopilot and not just do it the old Kerbal way. The old Kerbal way, just like I did for my first autopilot for vanilla game with no mods, was that uh, we should launch, do a, some basic gravity turn and go towards the horizon and watch our apoapsis and once it reaches the target altitude, like 200 kilometers here, I would just cut off my engines and warp and, and coast to that apoapsis and then reignite the engines again to circularize the orbit. Well, in RO and in the real world we cannot really do this for three different reasons. 
first of all, the engines just don't cut off and reignite so easily. Most rocket engines, especially for launch vehicles, do not have this capability. SpaceX's Merlin being a notable example, or uh, Space Shuttle's uh, main engine. But most engines do not do that, uh, and we just can't reignite so easily. And we can also cheat on that by throttling all the way down to like 1% of the thrust, um, mostly because most engines don't throttle as well. And the third reason, probably the most important, is that the rockets in the real world take a lot more time to burn, to build this delta V needed to orbit, and we simply wouldn't have that much time if we coasted to the apoapsis. We would uh, sooner fall back into the atmosphere uh, than we would complete the burn. So we've all seen rocket launches. The, the rockets in the real world burn continuously all the time. And because they burn all the time, it's very hard for a human to gauge which direction should the rocket be pointing. Because it's a maneuver that takes a lot of time and is in a strong gravity field of the Earth, we cannot just do something like a maneuver. We would do in stock KSP, we would draw a maneuver and then execute maneuver by aiming at the blue marker on the nav ball. We cannot really do that because this this marker would change all the time and we just don't know how it changes. So we need an autopilot that will follow it, that will calculate these changes as we fly. And this is where the powered explicit guidance algorithm comes into play. I will not try to explain it in too much detail, just give the outline on how it works and what's the idea behind it. I read a paper from 1960s by Fred Terran and w alongside with some commentary done in more modern times by, by someone from the Orbiter forums and thanks to them I was able to build a working prototype first in MATLAB and later in KOS that we can see here. And the main principle is that we create explicit equations of motion for, uh, for the launch vehicle uh, we separate the motion into vertical and horizontal flight. Uh, so in a vertical flight we have gravity, a centrifugal force from the motion around the Earth, and a vertical component of thrust. And this, uh, this axis uh, is our altitude and vertical velocity. And the horizontal velocity is pretty much that, the velocity we work towards to get and um, stay into orbit. This is uh, and is only increased by uh, our horizontal component of thrust. And these two are bound by our thrust angle and the time. And what the algorithm does uh, is finds this time and, and pitch angle in order to meet the three criteria. Uh, the three criteria that describe our target orbit that is final burnout altitude, this is our target 200 kilometers, uh, and velocities that describe the ellipses in this point, that is for a circular orbit there is zero vertical velocity, after all we don't want to lose or gain altitude, we just want to stay on 200, and enough uh, horizontal velocity to stay on orbit, we can calculate it explicitly from a formula that balances uh, centrifugal force and and gravity. So we uh, so the algorithm estimates the best uh, the best pitch angle at any given time uh, and since there are some approximations going on we need to repeat it every two or three seconds to kill the error we introduce each time and eventually uh, the closer we are to the target the the better the accuracy gets and ideally we should find ourselves on the perfect 200 km circular orbit. I had high hopes regarding this algorithm uh, because I knew it was used on the Atlas Center launch vehicle in some evolved form on the Space Shuttle and I'm sure, uh, quite sure Saturn V's iterative guidance mode uh, also utilized an algorithm in principle very similar to, to this. So I expected I expected some great accuracy, especially that in the original paper they stated the accuracy in simulations was very good, uh, and I was hoping for a real nice orbits. So 
let's wait till the stage burns out and see how it went. So there we have it, there's the main engine cut off and the orbit is not perfect, it's not perfect 200 kilometers uh, it's about 10 kilometers off in the apoapsis and 5 kilometers uh, short in the periapsis um, which from all practical points of view is okay because I wanted to use this algorithm to launch my payloads into a parking orbit and then carry on my missions manually from there but if you wanted some some great accuracy, then this is uh, this is not acceptable. This is uh, this is not good. Mm, I don't know why. I don't know the reason why it's not uh, perfect. Why it doesn't work uh, that well. So if anyone has uh, some uh, hints or some input, I would gladly welcome a comment. Um, this is what I wanted to show you today: the powered explicit guidance. Thanks for watching and fly safe.